we made our way into Yellowstone National Park and we're gonna fish the Lamar River here this afternoon and hopefully get into a lot of fish. Jamo, what are you digging for, bud? A. Okay, that's important. You can't fish without the sacrament. Oh, there and it is. Deep. We brought it back out. Look at that. Now she's ready. All right, Joe is taking two rods with him and he has a fancy, look at this, clip it on there. It's plastic. Look at that, that just clips right on there. And he is ready to go. of the Lamar. Last time Joe and I were here in this relative same spot, we, uh, we had an epic day. Uh, we started that day off with a video documenting what we were going to use, so we thought we'd do the same today. A little different approach. I'm going to start with the barrel ant and throw that along the banks, undercut banks, and dropped off of that. I've got a little Pertagon nymph. Joe's gonna take that same Pertagon nymph and bounce it on the bottom. Right, right there. Anyone can see it. Reason being is we see some olive colored mayflies already in the water. And then in addition to his Pertagon, he's gonna have an emerger. Man, this guy is tiny, small, little tiny. Made us a merger. So we got the top covered, we got the bottom covered, we got the surface film covered. We should figure this out pretty quickly. And of course, we got Dave fishing below us. Not sure what he's using, but there is a chance he could crack the code before us. A chance. <laughs> Just so happens, Dave cracked the code. Let's go see what he figured out. It didn't take long after Dave got into one. Uh, I got one on the black Pertagon as well, except it came up, this guy came up after the, uh, after the hopper pattern. And uh, that's when I set the hook. And it turns out, yikes. It turns out he had the Pertagon already in his mouth. So nice, nice beautiful fish. Beautiful cutthroat on this guy. This is unprecedented. I'll take the net. He got two on the same cast. That's awesome. Here, I'll net him. Really? That's one fish. Uh, hey, the other one was just coming by him a lot then. It's a nice fish though. All right. Oh yeah. First fish on the dry fly. Little, little cutthroat, but still, still got him. Easy. All right, little guy. We got Pertagons on, we got dry flies on. This guy just came up and ate it. Nice and easy. Nice and easy guy. Oh, the fly just came out. Dave and I are working the dry fly on a nice cloudy overcast day. We're uh, using the purple haze. You see that guy right there? Mm -hmm. A little bit of purple underneath there. All right, looking good. Go, go, let's go get another one. You got it. 
All right, Dave is working the dry fly action here on the Lamar River. There we go. There we go. Should be coming right up. There it goes. Oh, did you see it hit it? Yeah. There we go. <laughs> so we, <laughs> we're, talking about we're talking about the cast stroke and, and that fish came right up and snagged it. Oh, good fish. I got Dave using the uh, the purple haze. Uh, it only took a couple casts. He's gone, are you? And the fish, darn it, fish Houdini. gone. We'll have to do it again. That's it. <laughs> that fish got out of our net. <laughs> <laughs> hey, just go out there and get another one. Beautiful Lamar Valley behind us. It's always a good day when you're dry fly fishing. Make sure you got control of your line so when you see that fish come up, much slack on the water. There you go. That'll work. All right, we're going to move out to the foam line here. Come on, fishing. Come on. You may not have even done that. All right. Well, it's hard to know. I mean, it's close to my thing, my fly was, but I didn't do anything. They're, yeah, they're coming up like crazy right now. Dude, I'm coming back down here. <laughs> yeah. Come on up. There's plenty of room. All right, Joe came up to uh, check out the action. He caught a nice one down there. Helped Dave, helped Dave net this one. Did we let that fish go? Nope. Get back. Joe's downstream. He's working on a hole. Uh, he's having. Pretty good success. He said he caught one. You said you caught one earlier? I did. I got him right here at the mid middle of the pool. I was actually picking up my line to recast. There was a fish on there. So it was very nice. It's like an 18 inch cut through it. Nice. nice. Fish are definitely looking up today. Uh, first it was the hopper. Uh, then it was the purple haze. Now I'm getting them on the now I'm getting them on the ant pattern. Nice fish. Another nice golden. Yellowstone cutthroat. All right, Augie's got one on here. Had it on a dry. Little bugger is nipping at it. Here we go. We got doubles. I got them all on camera, boys. One. Same net. See if you can pull this off, boys. Well done. Look at that. <laughs> nice. Look at that. Uh, this time, Joe, they're the same size. Ha <laughs> <laughs> ha. Good one. All right, I, I don't know who's is who's. Well, mine still has a hook in it. Yours is that one. All right, so what'd you guys get them on? I got mine on a purple ant pattern. Okay. Mr. Bill, what and about you? Bill, mine is a green drake. Green drake. Nice, good choice. All right, this fish is mine. That fish is you want to fill the hook. See those fish if you can. Go, get it up, Phil. All right, get. Oh no, uh, it just got triple. Oh, that's that's all right. No, oh, let him go. Go on. That's all. It's okay. It's all right. Get him in there, Jameson. It, it technically was triples. All right, Jameson. Nice, another fish. I thought I was trying so hard to get triples. Close to Good triple. job, guys. So close to so, Jameis, this is fish like 21 for him today. Ah, He's believe. cranked it today. All right, here we go. Okay, all right, guys, look. Got it. All right, release. Nice. All right, Eric's got in the one here. Appropriately enough in the, the honey hole. And he just got off. All right, let's try this again. Yeah, Eric's got one on. Eric doesn't have his net. That's a pretty nice fish. Joe's coming in for the net job. And Much better than the last job. Yeah, all right. Good. Joe Nash on the dry fly board. That's a good, good golden cutthroat. 
All right, we need a net man. We need a net man. It's a good golden cutthroat. Bill Jurgens coming in on the network. Beautiful scenery. We got that fish. Excellent. Yeah, look here. Yes, you got it. Jameson's turn. He's got my rod, my Drake mackerel on. All the guys are watching. We're all coaching him. No pressure. Come on, buddy. Come on, me lady. Come on, me lady. And you're done. Come on. Shut up in my backswing. What's <laughs> the matter with you? Have you no decency? All right, in the meantime, Jameson broke off my Drake mackerel. Feel the net man's back on duty for Joe. Joe's spirits are getting lifted again. Small ones are way harder to catch. Way harder to catch. That's, that's what the guide said. All right, we got him. We got doubles. We got one on. Jameson, I'm gonna come down here and get this. Nice fish, nice fish. Nice fish. That's awesome. Bring him in. Oh, sorry, man. It's all right. It's all right. We'll get him. We'll get him. I got a fish on my line. Yo, take care of yours. This I guy's. Got, this guy's oh, here. Get. I've only caught two today. Give me your pole. I'll get the feeling. <laughs> yes. Yeah, that's a fish, dude. Yes. That's yeah. Nice job. <laughs> I don't want a double footage of this. Yeah, let's get a double of this one. <laughs> That's a nice this is fish. Fair doubles. Frog. Uh, we got doubles, buddy. Nice. Check, check out this guy I got. The Lord has been good to us today. <laughs> the Lord has been <laughs> particularly good to some of us. Oh, oh, oh look at that. <laughs> nice. Hold him up. <laughs> look this at me. Not even fair doubles. Look at me. <laughs> Today we're at the Slough Creek Trailhead and the six of us are going to uh, hike up this uh, mountain here behind me and drop down into what's called the meadows. So we're going to be hiking through the first meadow. Our campsite is in the second meadow and we're going to do a lot of fishing up in the third meadow. Uh, overall it's a, a total hike of around 11 miles in to the top of the third meadow and then back out. So we're going to be here all day and overnight and uh, looking forward to uh, this backcountry uh, hiking trip. All right, Eric, here we go. Go. I'm ready. Here we go, J-Mo. Armed. Armed and dangerous. Let's go, boys. Gorgeous place to catch your breath, isn't it? Beautiful. Whew. All right, as I, as the girl I hike with all the time, my wife's friend, I'll, I'm gonna be Ken. Make sure you're drinking water. Hey, buddy. So, tell me about, tell me about what's on your mind. Yeah. So today is the. 20th anniversary of uh, September 11th. So as I was packing my packs this morning and everything, you know, full bunker gear, SCBAs, all that way, 45, 48 pounds. And so as we're hiking this trail up to Slough Creek today, just remembering the everybody who lost their lives 20 years ago and 
especially the 343 firefighters. So decked out in Durango fire shirts and caps and yeah, just a, a little bit of a different meaning on the hike this morning. So just remembering. Really puts things in perspective, bud. That it, that it does. On a nice picturesque trail in the back country of Yellowstone to think of those firefighters who yeah. carried these same weighted packs up a hundred flight of stairs. About a minute ago, the second plane would have hit the tower. So, so yeah. Makes me extremely grateful for the country we live in and the people who serve our country. Also makes me especially grateful for my friendship with you. There you go, buddy. Your volunteer service to your local fire department in Durango. Hey, thanks for sharing that. Absolutely. This is the first meadow of the Slough Creek. I love how I made it a little harder to get to. Yeah. <laughs> Beautiful testimony. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> this is what pastors are for. All right. We're capturing testimonies. Morning. Morning. Horse and wagon be nice right around now, huh? Mm hmm. Amen. Yeah. There it goes. The other way. I don't think it's going to help us. I think yeah, we missed a ride. Coming back. Not coming back. All right, boys. Welcome to the second meadow of the Slough Creek. There it is. As far as you can see. Just coming into the second meadow, Slough Creek. Man, I'm pretty sure the video doesn't even do justice to what I'm seeing here, but absolutely beautiful. Say hi to my family, Dave. Hey. This is my new buddy, Dave, and that's my old buddy, Og. All right, Dave, this is where we turn off the main trail. Let's go set up camp. Ready, ready. We're good. 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 Well, I'm sorry, boys. 2S4 is not the site we were looking for. Uh, it's a beautiful site. It's right on the water. I thought we were on the water. Um, but we've overhiked ourselves. Just uh, chalk it up to another Augie mistake, and we're going to hike back to 2S3. Which means we get to make another entrance video. That's right. We'll do another entrance video here in a minute. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, that's, stay tuned. That's the upside. Stay tuned. Well, Joe was uh, wise enough to figure out that we overhiked our campsite, so he went for a little run, catch up with us, make sure we were okay. You're a good friend, man. <laughs> Eric, we are sure glad to find you. <laughs> we're wondering, which campsite are we staying at? We're staying at this one, mm. 2S3. 2S3, not 2S4. No, not 2S4. All right, well, that's that we way, another mile. Were you... We just uh, picked out our campsite here at 2S3, not 2S4. My buddy Jameson here thought for sure we were at 2S4 as well. But... I was positive. I made, I made him show me the email and reservation. <laughs> So uh, we found this beautiful grassy knoll here. Nice flat spot behind us. It's, it's really awesome. But the best part of this uh, grassy knoll, we'll call which it Lover's Bluff, which we're going to call Lover's Bluff, is that we get to wake up to this. <laughs> All 
right, Jameson and I set up our tent on the Lover's Bluff, 150 yards away is the actual. And I'm going down there now. Oh, Joe's gonna set up with us. All right, really a Lover's Bluff now. This is the 2S3 proper campsite. You can see there's a bear box back there, a ginger bear standing right next to it. And then if you just pan around here, you can see our uh, fire site and kind of where we're hanging out this evening. Another view out of, you see Eric's coming down from up top there. They must have their campsite set up there. Hey Eric, are you guys up the hill there? Yes, sir. All right, I'm gonna go up and take a look. Hey Dave. Yes, sir. And you picked out an awesome spot for your tent. Take a look. Beautiful. Can't beat the view. You got Dave here and Eric and Bill. It's gonna be home for a night. Hey Joe. Hey man. Welcome to Lover's Bluff. It's windy up here in Lover's Bluff. A little windy, but gorgeous nonetheless. Yes. So I thought Augie was going over to go to the bathroom again. Because this is where we drink and everything, but he's actually just taking his weenies. I'm gonna put my weedy in the cold water. Now he's putting the weenies next to my weenies. And I'm gonna have to finish that flask tonight to forget everything else that happens. I can neither confirm nor deny that Jameson finished what was in that flask. What I can contest to though, is later that same night, sitting around our campsite there in the second meadow of Sloop Creek, those brats cooked over the open flame tasted perfect. I apologize if you're disappointed that there wasn't a love scene in a video entitled Lover's Bluff. But then again, if you're at all familiar with YouTube, you know sometimes how deceiving thumbnails and titles to videos can be. One thing that's not deceiving is the size of the golden cutthroat we caught later that day after hiking up to the third meadow of Slough Creek. Episode three is coming right up. to the third meadow, boys. Eight miles in, this is the third meadow of Slough Creek. All right, I'm 11 miles up into the Slough Creek Valley, uh, past the third meadow, and made it all the way up here to the boundary of Yellowstone National Park and so now I'm going to uh, I'm going to cut down here you can see the park boundary fence behind me and uh, that's where that's where the Slough Creek uh, begins just above the third meadow I'm going to fish my way back down to our campsite Walking along the northern boundary of Yellowstone National Park. Just came through a little wooded section. A little, a little dicey through that wooded area, but I got my bear mace. Dropped into the creek and just worked my way downstream pretty quickly until I catch up with those guys. It's a little windy for fishing right now, so I figured a little documentary hike would be, would be appropriate. So welcome to the northern boundary of Yellowstone National Park. All right, I made it down to the creek and uh, the water, though you can't see it with the, with the glare, it is crystal clear and just gorgeous. And there are three 20 inch golden cutthroat trout sitting right in that hole below me. And so I think it's time, I think it's time to fish. All right, I'm up on this high, high bank looking down at a number of cutthroats right below me. I have 
Just a foam hopper on. Sloop Creek Special. Actually, it's called a Circus Peanut. And I'm going to slingshot it right down over this bank and hopefully catch this fish. Well, that was a fun little attempt, but uh, no good. I've been away from Eric and, and Joe for about an hour now. So I'm gonna still walk downstream and make sure I catch up with them so they don't think I got eaten by the bears. At least, not yet. Caught up with Joe, he was just right around the bend. And so he came up here, we crossed over the creek and now we're fishing that same root ball down below here. And uh, he's got a different pattern on. He's had a couple takes as well. So I'm thinking, thinking we might pick one up here. It'd be kind of fun. Joe's on the board. Good job, bud. So I threw that hopper kind of right ahead of that uh, yep. root ball there. It floated right to it. When it got about a foot off of it, boom, he hit it. All right. Good job. Good job. All right, number two for Joe. Right up against that root ball, those down trees. This is a better, this is a better fish. Good job. All right. Look here, bud. Nice. All righty. We are here on the upper slough, third meadow, right outside or right inside the park boundary. Avi is here. We're going to try and pick one up. Nice. Watch that float down there. Okay, that didn't take long. <laughs> Good job, Augie. Nice fish. That's a nice fish. Nice. Good job, man. Great fish. He's not a big fish, but he is the first fish to put a woolly bugger in his face. How about that? <laughs> All right, caught up here with Eric. He's had some success today, pretty much doing the same thing we've been doing. Uh, almost, you take it. All right, it's getting to be evening here, uh, up in the third meadow of Slough Creek, and I thought I would just throw on a woolly bugger. Joe came in for the save. This is a nice fish. He just slammed it right off the bank. Oh, Whew. look at that. That is a beautiful golden Yellowstone cutthroat. Yeah. <laughs> So I just caught that really nice cutthroat. Joe helped me net it and Eric pointed out that it was a Western Slope cutthroat. Uh, and then they said, if you start pulling them out, uh, I might have to switch to a woolly bugger. So Joe, buddy, you might want to switch to a woolly bugger. Beautiful fish.
How'd you sleep there, princess? I slept as you would expect, uh, as a near 42 year old man sleeping on the ground. Yeah, I slept about the same way. Yep. He only rolled over on top of me once. Once? Once. I was expecting more. <clears throat> That's a little bit disappointing. Yeah, let's go roll over some trout. Yeah. Sounds good to me. Morning, boys. Morning. Oh, buddy Joe's got my coffee. Oh. I'm gonna smell that straight black. Instant? Instant no, coffee? this is French yeah, press. Real this deal, is man. French pressed coffee. Whew. Alright. Welcome to our breakfast table. You good there? A, give me a touch more. <laughs> good. Question as to whether or not it tastes good. It's oh, you know it's going to taste good. <laughs> good boy. <laughs> Dave, Dave, what's going on, man? So I walked out behind the tent into the woods. I heard some crunching in the woods. What is it, Dave? It's a freaking grizzly. What? <laughs> J-Mo. Yeah, you need to look at that side. What's that? Look at that side. Oh, gosh. I think that'll leave a mark. That's a bear claw scratching on a tree. Well, we had a little scare there. One moment we thought there was a grizzly behind the bear, behind the, the tent. We went back to investigate and saw that uh, it was just a big bison that could easily be mistaken as a bear. But in the process, we did find some evidence of a grizzly bear. Big old elk carcass, probably a kill from the spring, I would imagine. Pretty cool to find an elk carcass full six by seven elk. It's pretty sweet. Right there, lover's bluff. All right, we're fishing just directly um, below our campsite at 2S3. All right, Bill and I are working our way downstream in the second meadow. He's hitting the holes with a hopper and then I'll jump in with a with a woolly bugger. We got ourselves a nice Slough Creek cutthroat. All right, finally we got Bill chasing a couple chasers, three or four chasers out of this hole. It's a pretty good fish too. That's definitely a different fish. It's a bigger fish too.
Bill and I hunted this guy down. And the best part about this gorgeous fish oh, is that it was on the Thin Mint Bill Tide before we came. Ah, oh, that's beautiful. Good job, Bill. Good job. All right, let's get him back down in the water. You put him right in your net. day huh oh fantastic day fantastic day first time i ever caught a cutthroat western cutthroat on a streamer and it's the first time i ever caught a fish on a streamer that i tied that you taught me how to tie right at, right, at, right over your shoulder watch you tie it watch you catch it like i experienced the same exact thing you did wow except the bobbin wasn't in my hand and the rod wasn't in my hand. <laughs> Second one we started that night is still in the vise. Is it? Well, you know what that means. We got to finish it and come back. That's right. Amen. It's been a glorious day. Glorious day. It is perfect weather. Yeah. Goodness Perf gracious. Well, that's a wrap on the Slough Creek Meadows for 2021. Time to head back to the campsite, pack up, head out. More good fishing to come later either later this evening or definitely tomorrow. This, boys, is the pose we were looking for. This is the shot. This is the shot. Second or third wrap on the Sioux Street Meadows. <laughs> You've got all turned in enemies. <laughs> Not hike a long way. Yeah. All right, here's the plan for our last full day together. Right here on the top of the Miner Saloon pizza box, a map of the Lamar Valley. Bill and Jamo are getting dropped off here by Dave. Dave's going to drive down here and fish the canyon section and then midday pick up right in between. And then in the, in the evening, if you guys together want to come up and hit the Soda Butte, the Soda Butte fish is great in the evening. And then you can head back to Cook City and meet us up for dinner. All right, we got those other guys going to be fishing the Lamar Valley here on our last full day together as a group. And uh, Joe and Eric and I are heading to Specimen Ridge to fish the Yellowstone River uh, just downstream from uh, the Yellowstone Grand Canyon. Uh, but first thing first is we gotta get through the gate. And so here we are going through the Northeast Entrance Gate. And you are good to go. As far as you know, Specimen Ridge Trail is, is good to go, right? Great, have a great day. Thank you. You too, watch the day. Here we are at the trailhead of Specimen Ridge. We're gonna hike up in for about a mile that way, then drop down in and hit the, hit the Yellowstone River for the day. We're dropping in there. Yeah. Well, that's cool because this is, here's the area. Okay, we're not even close. Good. All right, we've reached our highest elevation for this hike. There's the view behind us. The top of Specimen Ridge, we're about to drop right down behind us. And you can see the Yellowstone River as it comes out of the uh, Grand Canyon of the Yellowstone.
Hey Joe, glad to be back down here on the Yellowstone with you. This is awesome, isn't it? Yes. Before we get started today, as we're suiting up and gearing up, just want to give you a little fly fishing life hack. All right, what is that? If you're ever in the situation where you lose your real case, okay, and at the same time or in the same period of time, you also lose one of your gloves, okay, your spare solo glove makes for an excellent real case. Watch this. See that? You just put your reel in your glove. Now this glove has a purpose and this reel has a case. You've just changed everything for me. Thank you. Wow, that's a nice fish. Now that is a Yellowstone cutter. All right, we're back, Joe. Didn't take long. Oh, this is so Literally awesome. first or second cast on the on the Prince Nymph. She's such a beautiful fish. <laughs> Look at that. Yeah. Hey, Joe, right, you've gotten go. both species Woo. of yellow uh, cutthroats out here. All right, now Eric's in on the action. Prince Nymph seemed to be the ticket today. Nice little cutthroat, not bad be beginning. Good job, bud. Got your finger too, didn't he? Oh yeah, he got me with the drop fly right in the top of the finger. <laughs> Joe's upstream, putting on a little clinic. You can uh, see him landing one there. But if you uh, pan back around and down river, you'll notice that I, as well, have found myself a nice golden cutthroat. So, so uh, these fish are taking Prince nymphs. So you tied two on. I just put on two. Tied on two, and, uh, and look at this, folks. It's working. There are two fish on each fly. On each on fly. Each fly. Look at that. That is ridiculous. Uh, let's net them both. There's one. <laughs> there's two. This is uh, doubles at its best. Joe literally caught himself doubles here. Look at that. Doubles. Oh. There goes one. There's the other. All right, we may have brought Eric over to the dark oh, side. He had to grab a hold of Joe's uh, Euro rod. He went out there, literally one or two casts, and then he says, what, it's this easy? Ah, uh, this is awesome moment. Captured on film, and that's a, that's a pretty good sized fish too. Yeah, you're right there. Oh, you're right there. That's a good fish. Joe's coming in for the landing. Yeah. There we go. <laughs> we got him. <laughs> Documenting Eric Weller's first fish check nymphing. Little surgery going on here, holding it up for us. There we go. All right. What do you think? That is totally ridiculous, really easy. <laughs> that was awesome. Well, that's, that's very disappointing. That was a big fish. Did not get him in. But as Joe adequately said to lift my spirits, it's only 1230. We got another six hours of this plenty of time for another hog. Well, not quite six hours has gone by, but maybe six minutes. The fish isn't as big. There we go. Beautiful. Yeah, that makes you feel better after losing a big fish, doesn't it? <laughs> it's always a good day when you bend a blowtorch. That could very well be why that big fish got off my, got off my line. A bent blowtorch, right there. I think it got off. I cut my leg. <laughs> All right, that last clip, that was a snag, not a fish. But now I'm gonna catch a fish.
That's how you do it. It's been an excellent day of fishing so far. Only two hours into our day. It's about one o'clock and it's lunchtime. And for lunch today, on the stream side menu, some foil wrapped Miner's Saloon Cook City Combo Pizza with jalapenos added. The only thing that this stream side lunch is missing, Jameson, is you and some Grateful Dead. All right, the uh, after lunch menu is cutthroat. Yeah. The bite is still on. Exactly. Joe just moved upstream and found us another spot to fish. Very nice. All right, let's get him back, get in, him the back water. in the water. Joe to the rescue. Joe gave Eric the line for the hole. Eric went out, literally first, second cast into one. So far, all the fish out of this hole have been really nice. Oh, yeah, they are. Looks like a good fish again. Oh, there he went. Hey, buddy. Look here, what do you think about that? The first course Gump says, it happens. All right, the after lunch bite has been good to all of us. Earlier, we had doubles from a distance. But right at the moment, Joe's netting one behind me, coming up forward. Uh, I don't Did know, I these fish, have you? Usually you these are a fish might be about the same uh, size. Finally. Uh, again, I think I got you again, Gosh. buddy. <laughs> Time to go for number 10. figured out why they call this fly the shop back because this is literally sucking them up from the bottom. Well, Euro nymphing has been exceptional today. Indicator fishing has proved successful today. You know what time it is now, don't you? It is streamer time so when i was up on slough creek finishing up my day in the second meadow yesterday i found the perfect rock to just sit down and recline in and now here i am on the yellowstone river getting ready to rig up my streamer rod and as i look down i find the perfect rock in the shape perfect shape of a chair I must say that I've been fairly lucky this week finding rocks that serve suitably as furniture. I know what you're thinking's coming next. Augie's gonna make a video of himself threading his fly line up through each of the eyelets. But I'm gonna skip, skip that today. Big fish demand big flies. Now ordinarily when I would start streamer fishing, I would start off with a, a nice big articulated streamer like this one but since i'm in yellowstone national park and articulated streamers are illegal makes for a perfect opportunity to put on my all-time favorite streamer the butt monkey and the butt monkey never disappoints well I'm a half mile upstream. No, I left my streamer box down by where I filmed the butt monkey video. So here I go on another hike. I bet that streamer box is sitting right next to my little rock chair. Hey buddy. Yes. These guys are looking a bit ominous. Yes, they are. Yeah. Not only that, but did you see that grizzly print? Yes, I did. Down on that gravel bar? Yep. Yeah. Things are literally getting a bit shady. <laughs> Spooky. And these are an additional sign that we are probably 
Not in a good place. Well, within the last five minutes, we've got a storm coming in behind us. We have bear tracks all around us. I think it's time to go find Joe. Let's go find Joe. All right, we got doubles here. All that needs a net. Oh, that's a nice fish, Eric. Ugh. All right, Joe, get yours in. Eric and Joe pulled off doubles. Nice, bud. Good job, look here, guys. <laughs> Very well done, go ahead and put them back. Lovely. My buddy Eric netted the fish for me. Looks like uh, Joe might have one on down there as well. We got doubles. We got doubles. I got a rock. Oh, he got a rock. Lift that baby up for me, buddy. There we go. That is another cutthroat for the books. Looking good. All right, it's getting towards evening here. Eric and I are hiking back downstream. Joe's just behind us. We're walking through a bit of timbers, which is, explains why my rod, why my rod just got tangled up. This is always a scary, scary portion of hiking Yellowstone when you're walking through the timbers. And so you usually kind of have to grunt loud, right, Eric? And carry this. Carry bear mace and do things like this. Hey bear, hey bear, hey bear, hey bear. Coming through. so you come through the timbers and then as you come out of the timbers all of a sudden you're on what's called the sulfur beds just a giant sulfur bed literally it's like walking into another world we've hiked all the way downstream we're actually in a bit of a canyon uh, we're just below where we hiked in and so our goal this evening is that all three of us would uh, land another fish and then uh, we're going to hike back up that incline uh, to specimen ridge trail uh, before calling it a night so here we go three more fish and we're done got joe out of the way good job bud Quick release, that counts though. All right, Joe was first on the board. I switched back to my Euro Nymph rig. That's my last fish of the day. Now we gotta get Eric one to one. All right, yeah, we got him. Okay. Ow! <laughs> Smile. Smile, friends. Pretty close to a hundred fish day. I know between you and I, we've had at least 50. Joe, 50 on his own. That's a 100 fish day. Today's my last day here in Yellowstone. I'll be fishing with Dave. The other guys in our group flew out this morning. And so Dave and I have a goal to get what's called a Yellowstone Grand Slam. And that is we're gonna catch a cutthroat, a rainbow, a brown, and a brook trout. And so we got about 12 hours to accomplish this. We're gonna start here behind me with the Yellowstone River, and work our way downstream to where it meets the confluence of the Lamar River. So we're pretty sure we're gonna get the cutthroat uh, in hand here, and it should be a great morning of fishing. Dave got the Grand Slam started. Looks like we got a fish on. Let's see what it is. All right, there we have our first fish of the Grand Slam day, and Dave got himself a rainbow out of the Lamar River. Oh yeah. All right, excellent. Dave's already on the board with his rainbow. He got his rainbow out of the Lamar, which is uh, right behind us there. And uh, he and I are now standing at the confluence of the Lamar River. And behind me here is the Yellowstone River. 
I'm fairly certain we're getting a couple cut throws here in the Yellowstone. And so, buddy, I think we're off to a good start. Heck yeah, we are. All right, let's get it going. Grand Slam. Grand Slam, here we come. And just like that, we're into another fish. Looks like a good one, Dave. This is, uh, we're still technically in the Lamar here. Yeah. Uh-huh. That's, we got a cutthroat right at the it. confluence. Ooh, he's gone. Didn't take long here at the Gardener. Dave's three out of four so far. Let's see that beautiful brown trout. Here he is. Beautiful red spots. Look at that beautiful red spots on that brown trout. All right, Dave and I are still working on our Grand Slam. We got three out of four. We got a rainbow first this morning on the Lamar. Then we got a cutthroat also on the Lamar. We struck out on the Yellowstone. We headed over and got our brown trout on the Gardner River, uh, just uh, upstream from the high bridge. And now here we are at the Sheep Eater Cliffs and Dave and I are going to uh, walk downstream. I'm pretty certain we're gonna get into a, a brook trout here. So let's go complete the grand swing. Let's get one. Let's do it. Dave doesn't believe me that this is just like climbing down steps, getting Dave down. Doesn't believe you. Getting down into this canyon wall. Come on, Dave. You got this, buddy. I got it. You got it. You're good. good. See? That easy. You got it, man. I got it. Right. This here, coming down through this brush, this is called high sticking. Right. <laughs> high sticking. <laughs> got my rod through there. I barely made it myself. the key to completing the grand slam we're going to throw that fly right up into the canyon all right while dave's having his way upstream trying to complete his grand slam i threw on a little sterling and hurl swung it down through a little tiny riffle and I caught a little tiny fish, but it is a brook trout. Look at that beautiful brook trout. Here we go. All right, here's Augie hooked up. That's an orange bellied one, bud. Orange belly, it's what he was looking for. There he is. To the net. Oh man, wait to see this fish. All right, I got another orange-bellied brook trout, but this time, this guy's got a black jaw. Can you come in here? Look at this guy's black jaw. A black belly right underneath it. We'll put him in the water here. Just see the gorgeous colors of this fish. The white on the fins. Can you see that? Is it coming through? Yeah, it's coming through great. Man, just a beautiful, Brook trout caught him on. Look at that big little jaw. That's gonna be a big fish someday. Oh yeah. All right. The look belly. Here. Beautiful. All right, Dave's got the right fly on. We've had several takes. Just a matter of getting the hook set. There we go. We got it. It's a grand slam. Grand slam, baby! It's oh, a nice it's a one beautiful, too. It's a beautiful fish, beautiful too. Beautiful brookie. Hey, buddy, look here. You hey. got the grand slam. Ready? Yes, I did. Let's see the fish. There Bring him is. up. Look at that look beautiful. At that orange bellied. All right, put him back down in the neck, get him some water. Okay. Oh, beautiful, bud. Now let's get a picture. that there we just completed it the grand slam Hell yeah, good job bud let's get that fish back bring them up 
All right, go ahead and put that baby back home. We'll see you, guy. He's gone. He's had enough. All right, Dave, that's a wrap on the 2021 20, Yellowstone fly fishing trip. How about the capstone? Yeah, we had grand a slam. We had a grand slam today. Got a cutthroat, a rainbow, brown trout, and we just capped it off with a couple gorgeous, gorgeous, brookies. gorgeous brook trout. A wonderful week. We had a great group of guys, and uh, always look forward to doing it again. Until next time. Until next time.